Water does not conduct electricity. Now, if we're being pedantic, then anything conducts electricity if you put enough voltage across it, but that doesn't count. Under normal circumstances, water does not conduct electricity. It's true. Now, obviously, there's a trick here because we all know you're not supposed to make peanut butter toast while taking a bubble bath. And the trick is, it's the stuff in the water that conducts electricity. It's called ions. I'm going to simply explain the chemistry in the next video. Right now, I'm only going to demonstrate. I'm going to demonstrate with distilled water, so that's water with nothing in it but water, and then we can add some salt, which adds some ions, and I can show you how regular water becomes a conductor of electricity. And that's why tap water is dangerous, because it's got stuff in it. It's got minerals in it. It's got chlorines and fluorides or fluorines, whatever it is. It's fluoridated. But even distilled water is not safe to take a bath in while making toast because it doesn't stay distilled for long. As soon as you get in there, as soon as you put it in your tub, stuff starts to get in it. But enough talking, more showing. So I will just be using my regular multimeter in resistance mode. Basically, a multimeter, when you're measuring resistance, puts a voltage across something, measures the current, and that's how it knows how much resistance there is. On this one in particular, 0L means there's more resistance than it can measure. Right now, it's set on 2 mega ohms, so anything greater than 2 mega ohms, it's just going to say, well, it's more. And then, if I short the leads, we go down to about 0. Now, if I go to the lowest setting, we can actually see there's, you know, part of an ohm because nothing's perfect, but way up here at 2 mega ohms, it rounds off to zero. And I'll just be using simple glass jars. These are from peanut butter. Let's move this out of the way. So you can just get distilled water at the grocery store. This is not going to be medical distilled water. This is not good for anything serious, but it's perfectly fine for things like a computer coolant or chemistry. So if I put distilled water into this jar, carefully, so I don't get it all over my table. So there's a jar of distilled water. Always test your leads, make sure nothing's disconnected, so they short to zero. And if I stick them right in this water, nothing happens. So as I was saying, nothing happens. I've got these probes right in here, sensing all the way up to two mega ohms, and it's more than that. So what just happened? Why did I look like a fool? Because in my testing, that didn't occur to me. These probes that I've been testing with still had salt on them. So salt ended up in the distilled water. So I switched to my other one because that one didn't have salt on there. Anyway, like I was saying, nothing happens. No conduction. Not at all. Right there in the water. Put them right next to each other. If I short them in the water, let me try and short them in the water. There we go. See, they're touching each other in the water, but as soon as I separate them at all, nothing. It climbs up and up and up as it's measuring and nothing. But then if I put the other probes in here, see, it starts to conduct very little. And that's a much higher number than it was before because I tried to wash these off. Apparently, it's harder than I thought to wash salt off of multimeter probes. But that just skipped ahead of the demonstration. You saw on this one, it was reading zero. So... And now, if I put the clean probes in here, now that some salt got in there from the other probes, oh, apparently it wasn't that much salt, because it's still not showing, but yes. So now what I'm going to do is get some tap water, straight out of my bathroom sink. So here we have tap water from the bathroom sink. Probes are working, and when I stick it in that water, oh, all of a sudden... Now, you might think, that's a lot of ohms. Yeah, that's a lot of ohms. But when you're dealing with 120 or 220 volt alternating current, that's not so many ohms anymore, is it? What happens if I get warm water? So here's exactly the same water, except it's been put through my water heater first. What do we get out of this? We get even fewer ohms. Chemistry. Chemistry is what's causing the stuff in the water to conduct electricity. And chemistry happens faster the warmer it is. I'll explain more of this tomorrow. But right now, warmer just means faster. So if you're taking your hot bath, it's even worse. So let's go back to the distilled water with the mostly clean probes. Show that I'm still getting, hopefully, more than two mega ohms. And there we go. So now I'm going to clip these probes in here on the jar so I don't have to hold them. I need a hand free. So I'll clip that one there and on the other side. So there. The probes are clipped in and it's showing more than two mega ohms. And I have here some salt. This is sea salt. You just use regular sodium chloride, any salt, table salt. And I am going to drop one single crystal. Crystal is this big, so not even a gram, I wouldn't think. You know, there's a lot of molecules in there, but it's just one. I'm going to drop that right in there. Just a tiny piece of salt. And I didn't even stir it. Didn't even stir it. And look, now we're down to only 1.9 mega ohms and dropping. I shouldn't put my hand in front. Look at this. That one single crystal of salt is starting to dissolve. And we're measuring resistance dropping. Let's put some more in. 
Let's put like six or seven crystals in. Just drop them right in there. And now, 1.4 mega ohms, dropping down to 1.3 towards it. Not even stirring. I'm not even stirring it. These crystals are just sitting in the bottom, releasing some ions. Let me drop some more salt in. Just a few. That's probably about 20 crystals or so total. Maybe 25. It's the salt. The salt, not the water, is conducting electricity. So now, let me go ahead and stir it up. Help it dissolve. Oop, heading down past three towards two. Not even as much salt as you'll find in your grocery store macaroni and cheese. And most of this salt is not even dissolved. It's not showing on this crappy camera, but there's a bunch of crystals at the bottom, not even dissolved. We're down to 251 kilo ohms. 251 k ohms. Stir it up a little more. 215 k ohms. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much at all. There's a whole bunch of salt. If I left this overnight and it all dissolved, I bet you we'd get down and have to turn the setting down. So there's your demonstration. Water does not conduct electricity. The stuff in the water does. So where am I going with this? Well, I'm kind of explaining electricity a bit more because electricity is in more things than just wires. So in the next video, I'm going to do the chemistry very simply. Don't run away. It'll be fine. I'm going to show you how things dissolve in water to make ions and what those ions do. And then I'm going to talk about something fancy called electrolysis, which is just when you actually put a voltage across something that has ions in it, such as salt water. Technically, that's what I just did because the multimeter was putting a voltage across, but it was a very small voltage. On the grand scale of things, nothing was really happening, just an incredibly small current going across. But when I put my actual power supply across it and go to 5 volts, 9 volts, 32 volts, we'll get some things happening. What is electrolysis good for? A whole lot of things. You can make hydrogen gas with it, but one of the fun things is you can etch metal with it. You want to take metal and etch a pattern into it? You can do it in your house with nothing more than a power supply, which includes batteries, although an actual power supply is better. So nothing but a power supply, something like a permanent Sharpie marker, some metal, water, and salt. You don't even have to use distilled water. You can use tap water. The thing about using distilled water is you don't really want a bunch of random crap in there. You want to get some distilled water and salt so you have just that going on and not whatever is in your water also reacting and possibly getting on your metal. But that's for a future video. For now, I'll be seeing you.